So how many of you all know what nuclear medicine is? X-rays involve You're right. You're right. So a lot of people when they think of radiology just think of x-rays because that's a big part of what radiology is. I'm going to check with them after you're done here and we'll see if we can look at some x-ray equipment also. So nuclear medicine is a very small field. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, the x-ray department here at Centerpoint has about 30 or 40 x-ray technologists and in nuclear medicine there's three of us. So comparatively we're very small. Um, our department, what we do is we look at body function. So, you know, an x-ray, if you break a bone, they shoot radiation through you, and that's how they form an image. And uh, what we do is we inject the radiation, the radioactivity into you, and we image it as it's being emitted. So we're looking at the function of different body systems, like your heart, uh, your gallbladder, your liver, your lungs, just to make sure they're functioning like they should, because um, oftentimes they're not, and they need to have corrective action. So if you guys want to look over here, it's a liquid solution, just a small amount, and uh, we wait three hours, and that radioactivity is what's called TAG, or labeled with a drug that goes to the bones. And what it'll go to is the bones that are healing that have tumors. Like this patient right here, all these bright spots, those would be tumors. So they can look and say, well, this patient has this many tumors. Um, this, this could, yeah, they, this patient has a lot of them. So your life expectancy, if you have that many tumors, can be quite short. You can go on in surgery and say, okay, well, that bright spot right there, these are the injections, there's four of them. That bright spot is where the, the first lymph node is. So they'll take that and that travel with that cancer site. Okay, so any questions so far? So, you know, a lot of what you hear about nuclear um, in general is, you know, nuclear bombs and, and things like that. Because what radioactivity is, is it's basically molecules that are unstable. So in order to get it stable, they emit certain electrons, which in turn hit other electrons and emit more, so it grows exponentially. So the amber ray, what it does, it's a certain type of radiation that's emitted. In nuclear medicine, that's primarily the type of radiation that we use. It can travel through uh, a good amount of area and travel through a patient's body. Um, these right here are basically detectors or lead plates, and the rays, when they hit that detector, they cause a light impulse to register. And these will come up over and under the patient. So what that does, it allows us to basically see where that radioactivity has gone. So this is another gamma camera, kind of the same idea as what we have over there. Um, it's a little bit different in the way it works. So sometimes we have patients who are very, very sick and they have a lot of equipment, and a lot of breathing machines and things that are with them at best, so they can't, they can't all fit in that room, in that camera. So this camera, what it does is it allows us to image them from around their beds. So we can bring them in here, we can move this table out of the way, we can bring a bed in here and we'll cause it to move over. We'll move this camera, but you guys don't have to stand back there because this, this is a full room camera, so it's going to come up over the total area. Same concept, we put the patient on the table here, and the camera is going to move around the patient. So these right here, it, there's a track that it goes on. So it, because it's so large, it allows us to have that ability to image patients with a lot of reading equipment, you know, patients that have been in a car accident, and have a lot of stuff that we have to work with. It looks like it. So now you'll see on the camera here, these, these uh, they're about two inches thick, these lead plates. They have uh, little, little cuts in them that basically stop those gamma rays that are going the wrong direction. Um, and they keep it to where the image can look readable. Um, those are called septa, and these are called columnators. So you can see back here, there's these uh, tape. So we have those that we can change out for different types of radioactivity and that allows us to the information. Lead, as you know, is very, very heavy. So each one of those weighs about 300 pounds. So they're not light. That's why it's all on, all automated on the table system so we don't have to lift them ourselves. <laughs> not that strong.
<laughs> so we're gonna go over here. <laughs> so you can see it's called a hot lab. So this is where we keep the radioactivity. Is it physically hot though? No. No, it's yeah, it's not physically hot, but that's a term to use to, to say something for radioactive. Um, that way you can know that there's a certain amount of radiation there that you have to be careful for and, and look out for. <laughs> yeah, see this is this is like my whole office. Uh, our radioactivity is all behind those little bricks. Who knows what stops radiation? Why does lead stop radiation? It's, really thick. it's thick, but there's another dense. word for it. Dense, yes. If the denser, the less those those radioactive atoms are able to penetrate through it. So this is what we keep our radioactive medicine in. So we call these pigs, and the only reason that is, it says if you put two this way, it looks like a big snout. And so every morning, we order a certain amount of doses that they, they fly in, and they send them to a pharmacy, and they deliver them throughout the day to all the different hospitals in Kansas. City. You can kind of feel it's a little bit heavy. So you see these a lot on TV. This is how we detect radiation. So let's say we have someone that thinks they had a radioactive spill. We would go through the floor and go through everywhere and hold that up to them to see if we can tell what the radiation is. What it does is it has a little film area in there. What happens when the radiation hits it, it, it um, signals what's called a count. So a certain amount of counts or counts per minute tells us how much radiation is in a certain area and also how dangerous it is. Uh, we can clean it up and then we can check it and see if we did a good job cleaning it up. So a lot of times you hear this, this noise here, kind of that chirping, you might have heard that on TV and things. You can hear it, it has a little test source. So that's, that determines, if it's chirping a lot, that determines if there's radioactivity in the area. So there's a radioactive dose in this pig, so when I take it out and point at that, it'll, it'll detect that. So right now I have it open, so the lead's off of this here. So I hold it there, and here it go off more. So you can't see radioactivity, but it's detecting that. It's kind of fanning out like a flashlight. Well, I watch a show on, on Chernobyl, but they just have chemical suits on. Mm -hmm. Does that do any good? No, and actually Chernobyl was a huge mistake all together. A lot of the people around Chernobyl did not have any idea how to handle radiation. So they gave a lot of these people chemical suits and told them they would be fine. So they put them on and went in, the gas mask went and it didn't absolutely no good. Okay. If they have lead under them, it would help. We can have certain types of radiation that's aerosolized. They inhale that and then we can image their lungs. So that way we can look at their lungs and see if there's a blood clot. Because if there's no radioactivity getting to that part of the lung, that would mean there's a blood clot, which would be like threatening. Um, but if you can catch it, it would be much, very much more manageable. So most of that's really for TV. Um, in real life, chances of having an aerosolized are pretty slim to none. Um, they might still wear gas masks just because I think for the most part, when you come to those type of things, people aren't really familiar with, and it's kind of a better safe than sorry type, uh, type scenario. But uh, it can be aerosolized, that is a possibility, but um, for the most part, the radioactivity that you would have would be from an actual radioactive source or from a radioactive spill. Um, it's very unlikely it would be aerosolized unless there's some way to aerosolize a nuclear bomb, which I don't know of this. We wouldn't do that. So, what schooling did you have for your degree? Well, I got my bachelor's degree in it, so uh, four years. and. Um, there are other avenues you can go to become a nuclear medicine technologist. Um, some people will get their associate's degree in x-ray and then they'll go on to another um, school for about a year and a half to get another associate's in nuclear medicine and then they can perform that. So there's two different ways of doing it. Uh, I just did my bachelor's degree. Did you have a question? That tube of medicine, how long would it, do you think it would take for that to like decay and no longer be ready? Oh, that's a very good question. So. That medicine that I had there is called Technetium 99M. So the M stands for metastable, meaning just that it's, like we talked about, an excited state and it's decaying constantly. So it has a, what's called a half-life, and that's every six hours. So that amount, if I just wait six hours from now, will be half the amount it was before. And the same thing for another six hours, it's reduced by half. So um, every type of radioactivity has a different half-life. Some are 300 years, some are six hours, some are two minutes, which we can use to our benefit because we can treat patients according to the half-life, also the amount of energies that they produce. 
Uh, you want a high energy to penetrate to show you know hard to see objects or hard to see uh, body function. PET stands for positron emission tomography. We don't have a PET scanner in the hospital here, but at the cancer center down bottom of the hill, we do have a PET scanner. Um, and the way that works is very similar to these cameras up here, but the whole theory behind that is it will always emit, the positrons will emit in exactly 180 degrees apart from each other. So it's in a circular field, and since it's always 180 degrees apart, it can determine by where it hits that exact area in the 180 degrees as to where it's originating from the body. There's definitely Brower, so they might have patients, so we'll have to kind of just see how they are. Ray is it's different than what we do in nuclear medicine because they just shoot radiation through and that's how they cover an image. So it can be very useful for broken bones um, to, to see inside your body, to see how well, how bad they're broken and how well they can possibly go. So this is the x-ray machine. So basically it's shooting a large amount, and as we talked about, different densities can stop radiation. Bones are very dense, so they're very good for doing x-rays on it because of the density compared to other tissues in your body. So is that why they can x-ray through uh -huh. cast material? Oh it's yeah. Not it's not as dense. Fiberglass. <coughs> oh yeah. Dense, right? mm -hmm. So that's why they can x-ray that very easily. And once again, lead being one of the densest things that there is, makes it to where lead um, very much stops x-ray. So a lot of times you'll see x-ray technologists have those lead aprons on, um, and what that does is it keeps their radiation levels uh, down. Uh, if you're just having a couple x-rays a year, um, any radiation exposure is not good for you, um, but it's kind of a calculated risk. The broken bones aren't good for you either. So they, the doctors kind of look at that and say, well, yeah, we, we know your exposure we don't want um, to have, but in this case it's necessary because we want to treat you and make you feel better. So certain risks are, are beneficial to do that treatment. MRI, which doesn't use radiation, or ultrasound. Those two modalities don't use radiation. Ultrasound uses sound waves. CAT scan. That's, a, that's a, an x-ray. And basically a CAT scan has multiple x-rays in a circle. Okay, well I think that pretty much covers it, so uh, I'll walk you guys out and we'll make you find your way out on your own. <laughs> That's another merit factor. Right? Yeah. <laughs>